Even though there are newer versions out, we're going to help you decide between two headphones of similar age. The Sony WH-1000XM2 and the Bose QC35 2s. So you buy headphones for many reasons, right? And one of them is... They need to look good on you. I like how the XM2s look. They are very distinct look. They don't look like a generic set of headphones. I'd say the same about the Bose. Not shabby at all. I'd even say more stealthy. I'm boring. Yeah, at least you don't need a head that's shaped like a pizza to make them look good. And I get the Bose for two reasons. Comfort and quiet. It's very original. And the Sonys are alright, you know, comfort-wise. Um, in warm weather, your ears tend to get a bit sweaty because they tend to press against your earlobe, so... Yeah, and I'd say the Bose is comfortable for generally everyone because the ear pads are wide, they're deep, and the ears fit inside the pads, which makes them really comfortable. So what this also means is that the passive noise isolation on the Bose is better. And the typical cabin pressure feeling that you get with noise cancelling is less prominent on the Bose, whereas on the Sony, you just feel it a bit more. I agree, the active noise cancelling is also a little bit better on the Bose. It cancels out low humming sounds like engine sounds slightly better than the Sony. And what Sony lacks in quality, it tries to make up in quantity. It has a ton of options to customize noise cancelling and sound quality. You won't end up using all of these settings. I just use the hard to find wind noise reduction feature. Which the Bose also has on the low setting. And the focus on voice once in a while. Yeah, it's the Bose doesn't have. But you know Bose's philosophy of high, low and off work just fine for me. You don't need 20 stops on a noise cancelling scale. And maybe a first world problem, but I hate the fact that on the Bose, you can't change the noise cancelling level using the dedicated button when you're on a phone call. You either have to hang up, change it, or open the app and then change it there. But you know what Bose does really well? calls. They work normally, they work on a bike, and they work in the wind. Yeah, I have nothing to say here because even though I can change noise cancelling settings during phone calls, Sony's phone calls have been hit and miss, more miss than hit to be honest. Uh, so much so that I've actually stopped using them for phone calls altogether. Yeah, because you're a fuck mom and you need to make phone calls. Absolutely. I'm a fuck mom. All right, let's complain a little bit about these headphones. Um, complaint number one, both of these headphones support onboard voice assistants uh, and you have a button on these headphones that lets you choose between either summoning one of those assistants or switching the noise cancelling modes. And you know, if you can make these headphones, you can probably make an additional button that lets us choose these things on the fly. And complaint number two, these are expensive headphones, so you don't buy them every year. Check the links in the description below for the latest prices. Thanks. And you really want to personalize them. But the problem with both of these headphones is that when you turn them on, they default to the original full noise cancelling level. It's a shame. Um, but Sony does give you a little more power over the noise cancelling. So you have your full noise cancelling and you have your noise cancelling off. And you have a setting in the middle called ambient. And this setting you can use to customize. Um, so you can either choose Maximum noise cancelling somewhere in the middle, focus on voice, wind noise reduction. And Sony remembers that setting. So when you cycle from noise cancelling off, back into ambient, it remembers your last use setting. And it remembers it even after you switch the headphones off. So points to Sony for that and a correction from our last video. And for this reason, we'd recommend not using the button for the assistant, but use it for noise cancelling modes instead. It's a lot more practical. Yeah. And worst case, you can always call up the assistant by long pressing the play pause buttons. And while those two complaints exist, we still really like that both headphones have an app. It's true that the Bose is more Spartan and then the Sony is more feature rich. But it's not just the software that's different. They both have different industrial design approaches. The Bose likes its buttons being pushed and the Sony likes that touchy feely stuff. Yeah, at the end of the day, both approaches work, uh, but I 
prefer Sony a little bit, um, especially when it comes to, I don't know, moving to the next track or skipping part of a podcast, like, I don't know, the Verge cast, which has a section which you don't like, like, I don't know, This Week in Elon. Stop that section, Eli. So coming back to the buttons, they're just a lot more easy to use on the Bose because those buttons, they chunky. Yeah, and these headphones chunky, but the buttons, no chunky. They're very, very subtle and sometimes hard to hit. You always hit, end up hitting the wrong buttons, in fact. That's where the feeling part comes in. Where the Sony definitely loses out to the Bose is multi-device connections. In my experience, the Bose wasn't perfect, but hey, I'll take imperfect over non-existent any day of the week. And the battery life is mentioned every time you start up the Bose, which I find very handy because you never forget to charge them. And I also feel like the battery life was a little bit better on the Sony. Um, or maybe it was just the Bose screaming in my ear that it's 10% less every time I start them up. Dude, let's just stick with the facts. Did you measure that? This is a post-truth world, Kevin. We don't, we don't stick to facts. This is about feeling. I feel that the Sony was better. That's my feeling. Look, bottom line is, we're not really bothered about the difference in the battery life. You know, both of us use it for a couple of hours a day and we get two weeks out of it about. Yeah. So yeah, if you're somebody who's more into that stuff, maybe you should research it. All right, those were all fairly sound reasons, Rowan. But let's talk about the sound reason. Oh, but I mean the audio quality, of course. I find that it's really good on the Bose, it has a good bass response, and I enjoy listening to music on them. And that's about it really. I mean, if you're not a very discerning listener for lossy stream music, it sound okay. Uh, but it does have that Bose sound signature that audiophiles love to hate. Uh, but me personally, I prefer the Sony. It's more balanced, uh, the mids are more present, and there's nothing exaggerated about the music. It's a very true representation. Um, and with a good source, they sound really, really good, especially wired. All right, this brings us to the section to buy or not to buy. So whatever you guys consider, consider, do consider using the affiliate links in the description below. Consider it. It doesn't cost you anything extra and it helps out the channel a bit. You should consider buying the pose if one, you've got sensitive ears and you want that extra comfort for those long listening sessions. Two, canceling out the most amount of noise is really important to you. Three, if you're a fuckmon like us, you make a lot of phone calls and have multiple devices to work with. And finally, you don't get Bose at Bose's sound signature. So you should consider buying the Sony over the Bose if you expect one, to use those thousands of options that Sony provides you to customize your sound quality and noise cancelling. Two, you like swiping them pads and you think these buttons are an ancient relic of a distant past. Three, you're a heavy user and you really need that extra hour or minute that the Sony provides you in terms of battery life. And four, you appreciate a more balanced sound signature. Yeah, that's it. That's all you get? That's all I got. Cool. You've been considering, and we've been DHRM. And you appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> when it's cooler, it's all right. They also tend to press against your ear lobe a little. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> yeah. Trying to make this natural. I don't know. Like <laughs> What's wrong with the ear lobe? <laughs> okay. Let's do that again. again. <laughs> okay. And they also tend to press against your ear lobe a little bit. <laughs>